Okay, now that we have our motors made, our airplane built, the motor wound up, it's time to talk a little bit about flying. Read the instruction sheet that came with the Alpha kit. It does have a few diagrams and speaks a little bit about flying the airplane. The illustrations are probably useful uh, because when you try to fly your airplane, it's going to do certain things in the air. It may not do what you want it to do, so you need to know how to correct it. The first thing you want to do is once you get the airplane assembled and built, is you want to balance the airplane. There is a balance point, we call it the center of gravity, that the airplane needs to balance at to be able to fly uh, stable in the air. If the airplane is balanced tail heavy, the airplane is going to try to fly at an attitude such as this. There's not enough power for it to fly like that, and it will stall and fall to the ground. Basically, if it's stalling, you get a flight that's sort of up and down like this. What you need to do, if it is tail heavy, is you need to slide, and this is why in the earlier segments I talked about sliding the wing. If it is tail heavy, if you slide the wing to the rear, and you want to make adjustments very slowly and in small increments. Small changes make a big difference. So slide the wing further uh, toward the tail, which increases the length of the nose, which changes the balance. Think of it as a seesaw. You know, when you were a kid, the heavy kid always sat closer to the center of the seesaw to balance the light kid on the other end. You're doing that with the airplane. So slide the wing back and forth until you get it balanced. If it's tail heavy, it will fly like this. If it is nose heavy, it will fly straight into the ground and the opposite is done for that. Slide the wing forward to increase the mass behind the wing to balance it out. Very important. The instructions say that a starting point, and that's what it is, the starting point to balance this airplane is to mount the wing four inches behind the propeller or behind the end of the stick. That is a good starting point. It will differ airplane to airplane. Every airplane weighs slightly different, so uh, the adjustments will be different. Adjust the wing to get it balanced. I have found that this airplane flies fairly well. If the balance point is from one and a half to one and three quarter inches behind the leading edge of the wing. So you just have to experiment. Uh, once you get the airplane to fly, and it seems to be stable as far as balance goes, you may want to mark your fuselage stick, your motor stick, so that if the airplane is taken apart or things move around when it hits the wall in the gym, you can put everything back in the same location. Now, once you get the balance done, then it's time to try a few flights. Wind your motor, attach your motor to the airplane to fly or launch the airplane. You want to hold it in one hand. If you're right-handed like me, you hold it with the right hand, basically right under the wing. That's about where it's going to balance, so you hold it there. You have to hold the propeller because the motor's wound up. If you turn the propeller loose, it's going to start to spin. Hold the prop with your other hand. When you get ready to launch the airplane, you turn the propeller loose first. Let it spin for a second or so because you want 
the propeller to get into motion before you release the airplane. So you release the airplane and you do not throw it. You just want to move it enough to get it moving. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make, especially inexperienced people, is they want to throw the airplane. The harder you throw it, the worse it's going to launch because you immediately overpower the airplane, it will zoom straight up and fall to the ground. So, release the propeller. Once it starts to spin, just give a little bit of a nudge to the airplane to get it flying. I do not have room here to fly the airplane, so I cannot turn it loose. But you release the propeller and just move the airplane. And it will fly. It is a powered airplane. Some of the other things that you need to do, once you start flying the airplane, you want it to circle in a left-hand circle. And there is a reason for that, and I will not get into the physics of why you want it to fly circle to the left, but there is a reason for it. You want it to circle to the left. You're flying in a gymnasium or a room with four walls. It has to circle tight enough to stay within those walls. To get it to circle to the left, you can do several things. There are places on this alpha, you can see little outlines that's impressed in the plastic that you can bend the vertical stabilizer. You can also bend the tips of the wings. To circle to the left, you can bend the uh, stabilizer. And in an airplane, left and right is just as it is in your automobile. The steering wheel on an automobile is on the left side. So airplane lift is as if you were the pilot sitting in the airplane. So you want it to circle lift. <coughs> you bend this tab slightly to the lift. Now when you get the airplane to turn to the lift, it's going to want to bank to the lift. If that's left alone, the airplane will continue to bank until it flies into the floor. So to counteract that, you need to bend this left wing tip, and there is a little rectangle outlined here. Bend that down slightly. Remember, make very, very small adjustments at a time. What that will do is help hold the left wing up so that it will turn to the left but it'll also maintain fairly level flight. Usually the only adjustments you really need to make is to the rudder, the horizontal sta or vertical stabilizer, and the wing tip. Very seldom do you want to make adjustments to the horizontal stabilizer. While you're testing, is to use post-it notes. Instead of bending the foam surfaces in your test flights, just use a part of a post-it note, because post-it notes stick tight enough that you can make adjustments, but they don't damage the airplane and they're easily removed. So you can take a post-it note and stick on the edge of the vertical stabilizer. And bend it like you would the control surfaces. Fly your airplane. See what the results are. If it doesn't do what you want, post-it notes easily taken off. You can put it somewhere else, make other adjustments. Once you get the airplane flying the way you want it to fly with the post-it notes, then you know what to adjust on the foam surfaces. Take your post-it notes off, make the adjustment to the structure of the airplane, and it should fly okay. Remember, post-it notes are not included in the kit. 
So therefore, you cannot use post-it notes in competition. That's additional material. They're fine to use in testing, but remove them and adjust your uh, airplane before you go to competition. Practice and practice. That's how you learn how to fly the airplane. And you do have to learn how to fly the airplane. The airplane flies the way you tell it to. Remember, flight is basically uh, accelerating air and accelerating air. Acceleration means more than a change in velocity. It's also a change in direction. The wing deflects air downward. The opposite reaction to that is an upward lift. If you bend control surface to the left, the air forces the tail to the right. That's the opposite reaction. But when it forces the tail to the right, it initiates a left turn. So when you're making adjustments, try to visualize the airflow and you want to make adjustments opposite of what you want the airplane to do. Make an adjustment down, the airplane's going to react up. The more practice you do, the more you learn to fly the airplane and the more successful you will be. And that concludes the Alpha video. I uh, hope you have fun with this, uh, practice, enjoy going to competition. To me, it's one of the most fun things you can do in Science Olympiad.